Hi, I'm Johnny. This is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. And today, I'm talking about one of my all-time favorite movies. Today, Johnny Likes Fight Club. First off, yeah, yeah, I know I'm breaking the first two rules by talking about the movie. I am Johnny's dry wit, so I don't have anything really new to say about the movie, at least in terms of societal commentary or anything like that. I just think it's a masterfully done film that has obvious replay value. It's an easy 5 out of 5 for me, and I think that it is Fincher's best film, at least to date. 7 is close, but I like this one better. So that's my rating. You can like and subscribe now and duck out, or you can stick around and hear my thoughts on the movie. And they are going to be spoiler-free thoughts for those of you who haven't had the pleasure of watching this wonderful film. A couple funny lines, scenes, and ideas. I love the story in this, it's fabulous, and it's almost overflowing with the amount of cool ideas, scenes, and memorable dialogue. Here's some lines that make me laugh, stuck in my head for 20 some years. And I totally forget about Tyler's whole controlled demolition thing, and I wonder how clean that gun is. I am Jack Medulla Oblongata. Without me, Jack could not regulate his heart rate, blood pressure, or breathing. The shit that came out of this woman's mouth, I never heard. My God. I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. Every once in a while. It's a dildo. Of course, it's company policy never to imply ownership in the event of a dildo. We have to use the indefinite article, a dildo, never your dildo. It's also got some memorable ideas, such which I have to be kind of vague on so as not to spoil it, but how to frame your boss. This machine, 52 weekly paychecks and 48 airline flight coupons. We now had corporate sponsorship. Selling rich people back to themselves. This is the best sell. I thank you, Susan. And going going to meetings as an outsider instead of going to therapy. Bob had bitch tits. <gasps> this was a support group for men with testicular cancer. And uh, the narrator's job itself, which is running the numbers on car crashes. Which I'm not sure is a real job, but I imagine that somebody handles it in these companies. Uh, some scenes. Uh, the first time they hit each other. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Mother fucker! You hit me in the ear! Uh, I can't really show this one, but convincing the bar owner to let them stay. That was horrifically funny. And that chemical burn. I can show some of this. Doesn't spoil much. What is this? This is a chemical burn. The acting. I loved all the performances in this movie. Brad Pitt, Edward Norton, Helena Bonham Carter, Jared Leto, and even Meatloaf. Basically, if you were in it, you were in the cool actor books in my head for at least the next few years. I already liked Pitt, Norton, and Fincher before seeing the movie, but this just further reestablished that I indeed have great taste. I mean, it was so good that it even elevated Meatloaf to cool level in, like, the jaded teenager's mind, and that's not the easiest thing to do in the world. The look... The look of this movie is just something that you didn't see so much in 1999. It looks like it was shot digitally, but unless I'm mistaken, it was shot on film. At the time, this looked brand new and like nothing else really out there. Nowadays, it is a common enough look. The color grading, the lighting, and what have you. Maybe my memory's faulty here, but as far as I'm concerned, David Fincher pretty much invented this look, starting with the game a couple years before. If I'm way off base on that, let me know in the comments. Feel free to school me there. The movie is greater than the book. This is one of those rare times where I much preferred the movie to the book. The Chuck Palahniuk novel of the same name is original as hell and chock full of ideas, but apart from that, not all that great. I thought it was fairly messy narratively and I didn't really care for his writing style. I think that the screenplay by Jim Ools amplified everything good about the book and turned down everything bad. It does make for an interesting comparison though if you are a fan of the movie. Why not read the book? There's some minor changes, such as where we meet Tyler Durden. But ultimately, I say watch the movie and don't really bother with the book. Although, to be fair, I do know a fair amount of people who love the book, so... 
The music. When most people talk about the music from Fight Club, they generally mention Where Is My Mind, the Pixie song at the end, and that's about it. Which is a great song and an awesome and fitting needle drop, but there's also the whole rest of the movie with a great score in it to talk about. The score of this was done by the Dust Brothers, who are mostly known for their production work, and if you're a music nerd, the name should be familiar to you. If not, they were pretty big in the alternative scene in the 90s. They produced Paul's Boutique and Odelay. And they're also what the Chemical Brothers originally called themselves before they had to change their name because the actual Dust Brothers stepped in and were like, hey, you want to not do that? Anyway, it's a great electronic score that's at times pounding an abrasive techno and at other times simply serves as ambient mood amplification. It's underrated, really, especially when people come to talk about the things they like about the film. And I liked it so much that I actually bought it on CD with my very hard-earned money back when I was a jobless teenager. The cool factor and the message. If you didn't grow up when this film came out, I don't think I can truly express how cool it really was. It had this attitude about it that was just so fresh and relatable. The dark sense of humor, the anti-consumerism, the anti-establishment messaging, and just the general grungy outsider chic aesthetic thing that it had going for it was very, very appealing to me. And much of what the film had to say still is. It's never made me want to get in a fight, though. Fighting is cool is not my takeaway from the film. Although a lot of young men around my age, that was kind of what they took away from it. The whole, an entire generation of men are so numb, disenfranchised, and bored that they need to pummel themselves into oblivion in order to feel anything. Yeah, I've, I found this viewpoint of the film's message a little bit simplistic, to say the least. I thought the movie was more about how stupid it is that these men actually have to do the fight club instead of just sucking it up and going to therapy like grown-ups. Okay, so that's going into the social messaging side of stuff that I said I wasn't going to talk about, but I can't really help it. I have been hit in the face, and let me tell you, it did not make me feel alive or exhilarated or a part of something bigger. It did not give purpose to my life. My initial experience with the movie. I can't believe that it's almost been 25 years since I first saw this in the first couple of months of my high school years. But it apparently has. I remember seeing it opening weekend with my dad. Neither of us had read the book, but we were familiar with the primary players. And we were pretty excited about it because the trailer did a really good job on that end. And both of us loved it immediately. All the movie's humor, violence, and shit disturbing antics just clicked with us. Excuse me. Spread me with your pose. I don't know. Not Neither of us had any clue that the twist was coming, and it wasn't even until I saw it on video that I noticed the single frame splices of pit, and I couldn't believe that I missed them. They seemed so obvious viewing it the second time. Turns out I was just one of the mindless sheep in the theater, ignoring all the clues that were being given to me. Physical media. Last thing I want to mention about the movie is actually the DVD and, I assume, Blu-ray release. It's one of the best DVD releases ever, or at least ones I've seen in the ION. The special features are amazing, very, very cool stuff. I especially love the audio commentaries. Now, I'm a fan of audio commentaries in general, but this one goes above and beyond, and even the casual fan would probably enjoy these. They're all insightful, informative, fascinating, and never boring. And there's four of them to boot. If there ever was a time to actually pick something up on physical media, I would say this would be it. It's just a nice cherry on top of the movie itself to have the DVD release be worth the extra price. So, what did you guys think of Fight Club? Let me know in the comments, and if you didn't like and subscribe before, you can now. Or really anytime. It is quick, free, and relatively painless, plus it helps me out. Uh, thanks for watching me talk about movies for a little while, and you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes.